Welcome back. In our last lecture, we introduced the notions of substitution and transposition. In this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about ciphers based on substitution. Okay, so what is a substitution cipher? It means that you take each symbol in the plain text and exchange it for another symbol. And if this is done uniformly, meaning that you replace all the A's by the same sim symbol throughout and all the B's by the same symbol throughout, then it's called a monoalphabetic cipher or a simple substitution cipher. You might also have a, a, a substitution cipher in which you don't do things uniformly, that you replace symbols in the plain text uh, with different symbols depending upon where they are in the plain text. And if you do that, it's called a polyalphabetic cipher. We'll see examples of both of those today. Okay, so a simple substitution cipher is just a mapping from one alphabet to another alphabet. Uh, and so what is the key? Well, it's just however you uh, specify that mapping. So it might be a table that tells you, you know, map A to X and B to Y and so on, right? Uh, clearly a simple substitution like this is breakable because there are only a finite number of such tables, assuming that you know the alphabets. In fact, there's something like k factorial tables depending upon the size of the alphabets. And so you could try them all, but usually that's not necessary. And so that suggests that not only is it breakable, but it's not strong, if you recall what those mean. Um, often, when, when you use a simple substitution algorithm, or I, sh I should say always, uh, the redundancies in the plain text are going to be reflected in the ciphertext. They're just going to be moved on to different letters. And it's important to remember that not all substitution ciphers are simple substitution ciphers. Okay, so a substitution cipher that you probably played with as a kid is something called the Caesar cipher. It's a monoalphabetic cipher, and you just take each letter in the alphabet and shift it by some fixed constant. So, for example, if, if your shift was, was three, you might, or two, I guess, you might replace A by C and B by D and so on, and you do that circularly around the alphabet. So what's the key in this place, in this case? Well, it's something like how many, how many positions you shift. And so what's the size of the key space? Well, English has 26 letters, so I guess it's 25 or 26, depending on how you look at it. Is the algorithm strong? Probably not. And that doesn't mean that it's a, that it's a particularly weak algorithm. It just means you probably don't have to try all of those until you get the right one. Okay, um, so the Caesar cipher is an example of a simple substitution cipher. What does a polyalphabetic cipher look like? Well, here's an example. His, historically, the Visionaire cipher was a pretty powerful cipher when it first came out. Not so much anymore. Um, the idea here is you're, you've got a plain text and you've got another text which you're using as the key. So, for example, the, the plain text here is four score and seven years ago. And the key is monitors to go to the bathroom, which just happens to be the first words on a page of a textbook that I used to use for this class. Okay, so what, what you do is you line up those two strings and then you use the pairs of letters from the plain text and the ciphertext as indices into a particular table to tell you what the ciphertext letter at that position is. So that table is called the Visionaire Tableau and here it is, right? If you look at this for more than a minute or two, what you'll see is what's going on here is you've got 26 different Caesar ciphers and the Caesar cipher that you picked for any letter position depends upon the corresponding letter in the, uh, in the, in the key, right? So in this example, right, in, in the first case we had an F from the plain text and an M from the key. And so where did that R come from? Well, we look at column M, row R, uh, column M, row F, excuse me. And we see that what's at that position is an R. And it really doesn't matter if you use the column or the row because you're going to get the same answer either way because the table is symmetric, right? And so if you continue in that way, you, you get a pretty strong cipher. However, if you're using English for both the plain text and for the key, then there are certain regularities in English which are preserved in the ciphertext. So for example, some letters are very likely are much more common, I should say, in English than, than other letters. And so you're going to have those letters appearing frequently in the plain text and also in the key, 
And so the combinations of those two letters are going to give you regularities in the ciphertext that wouldn't uh, occur randomly. And of course, the attacker can always use those sort of regularities to get some leverage as far as decrypting the, the ciphertext. OK, so substitution is not just used in, in these older uh, ciphers, but it's used also in modern ciphers. So for example, the Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES, is a very common, very popular cipher these days. And there's a particular step in it uh, which is exactly a simple substitution step. So AES uses uh, an array of 16 bytes. That's where you put the original plain text. And then you modify that through a number of steps. Well, one of those steps is a substitution, where you take each byte and do a simple substitution based upon a table, which is just a fixed standard table. And you replace that byte by another byte. And you do that for each of these 16 bytes. But if you notice, that's just a simple substitution step. OK, so what have we said? Well, substitution is one of the building blocks of encryption, particularly modern symmetric encryption. Uh, simple substitution means replacing symbols uniformly throughout the text by other symbols. And polyalphabetic substitution means that we do that kind of a substitution, but the, sub the substitution that we make, or the replacement that we make, depends upon the location of the plain text character within the text. And so A here may get an X, and A here may get an R. Um, and, and that makes it much harder to decrypt the, the, the ciphertext. Thank you.